Winter Sprint Fest, The Cat and the Princess, San Luis Show Off, all this coming up on Horses and Courses. One back, boss. The Off-Track Betting Communications Network presents Horses and Courses, OTB's Thoroughbred News with your host, Jack Wolfeseeder. And now, with a look at this week's news in the thoroughbred industry, here's Jack. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses, a nice holiday week, a President's Day this past Monday, an extra day of steak racing, and a very nice day around the country to celebrate uh, Presidents Lincoln's and Washington's uh, day each February as we do. We've got our action from Gulfstream Park, the three-day fest uh, to kick things off on the program this week. Good turf race on Saturday afternoon, the Gulfstream Park Breeders' Cup Handicap a mile and three-eighths the distance, $150,000 in added purse monies. Some old, familiar, and very accomplished turf runners. And here you'll enjoy his Tom Durkin with the call. And they're off. Marcy Zenson heading for the early lead. El Gran Fernando was there. Rice was off a beat slowly and has rushed up on the extreme outside. Diplomatic Jet is involved in the early mix. Montjoy taken under a hard hold, reined in. Around the first turn, Rice, who broke last, has already made the lead, and he is moving at a very rapid pace for the distance. He's opened up by four lengths early. And then it's El Gran Fernando running in second, Diplomatic Jet in hand running in third. And the gray Marcy Zenson is fourth on the inside. Montjoy now a bit more relaxed, running along in fifth. Awa to his inside is sixth. Then it's Miwahita, and at the back of the pack, are Rory Creek, flag down, La Signe, and Identity. Moving by us for the first time, Joe Bravo trying to throttle down the speed of Rice, who ran an opening quarter in 23 and two, a half in 47 and two, and Montjoy moving early. Into the clubhouse turn, Rice in front, Montjoy up close. Down inside, El Gran Fernando runs along in third. Diplomatic Jet is fourth, running now about four and a half lengths from the lead. Marcy Zenson at the rail, Awad still patiently ridden in between horses. He's sixth, about six or seven lengths from the lead. To his outside, long shot, Miwahiba. Flag down, still conserved at the back of the pack, and so is Rory Creek. La Signe has one horse beaten, and that is Identity. Three quarters and one, 11 and three, midway down the back stretch. Rice trying to go it all the way on the lead with a half mile left. Montjoy poised in second. There goes Marcy Zenson on the inside and Diplomatic Jet rallies. Into the far turn, Rice in front, Diplomatic Jet powers up, second on the outside. Montjoy third, Marcy Zenson checks out. Awad now beginning to move and flag down, gathering momentum on the outside. They're coming to the top of the stretch. It's still Rice in front, Diplomatic Jet second, Awad third. Flag down fourth. Montjoy's in behind the lead, and El Gran Fernando's in with a shot. And La Signe in behind a wall of horses. Wide open here, coming down to the last furlong. Montjoy trying to come through on the rail. Here's flag down with an explosive move. And La Signe flag down is the leader as they come to the line. La Signe coming with thunderous strides on the outside. It's going to be close. La Signe nipping flag down at the wire. Five lengths back, Awad third. Well, here's La Signe making his 97 debut and gets the money in a squeaker. Head victory. Jerry Bailey made the difference here as this was one of six winners out of the 11 racers on Saturday's card. Flag down making his 97 start. Thought he had a race one. Just cannot hold off La Signe in that last half step or so. And has to grudgingly settle for second. Awad, what else can you say about this guy? Just put him in his starting gate, and he runs his race. Here he is, the iron-legged horse hitting the board again. But it is La Signe on that extremely fast turf course at Gulfstream, equaling the course record of 2, 11, and 1 for the mile and 3 eighths. Congrats to Billy Mott for having La Signe ready for his 97 debut. 
All right, now on Sunday afternoon, we did get some needed rain down in South Florida. Uh, the deputy minister to sprint for our older horses was the featured race. It's a $75,000 guaranteed sprint at three quarters of a mile. Let's take a look as again, here's Tom with the call. And they're off. Not surprising, punchline, fortunate review, all of them. Looking for the early lead, down inside, it's Templado and Bick is in between horses. Fortunate review on the far outside, punchline moves the fourth, and not surprising in Sea Emperor at the back of the pack. It's Templado, the leader by a length. Bick is on the chase second, and the favorite punchline right there on the outside, a 22 flat first quarter. As they hit the far turn, Templado the leader, punchline revving up three wide. Bick mixing it up in between those two. Then, not surprising, now moving to fourth, fortunate review, and see Emperor wide open, three lengths from front to back. Templado down inside, still holding on to a narrow lead. Bick continues to keep the pressure up. Punchline third, not surprising, will be fanned four wide into the stretch. Then, fortunate review, and see Emperor. They're at a half and 44 and four. It's Templado who cuts the corner and shrugs off Bick. Templado at the eighth pole by a length and a half. Punchline is struggling down inside Sea Emperor down to the final 16th. It is Templado, Jerry Bailey all over him and Templado is going to win. Templado by two and a half, tight photo for his second between Sea Emperor and Punchline. Well, he won six on Saturday, comes out on Sunday and wins a couple more this time gets the deputy minister aboard Templado. Jerry Bailey having a clinic of a weekend at Gulfstream. Templado making his second U.S. start. His first start was a little earlier in the Gulfstream meeting. He was third in an allowance race. This guy won his 11th race, winning the deputy minister. The 10 other wins all in his native Venezuela, so a South American import uh, shows these sprinters how it's done as he gets the two and a half length score. Sea Emperor and Punchline was second and third. Uh, the three quarters for Templado, nine and three, and went off at five to one, paid $12.20. Not bad at all, but Templado winning the deputy minister on Sunday. Monday afternoon, President's Day, the Lord Avey Stakes was the feature race. Three-year-old race scheduled on the turf because it seems every year uh, this race gets washed off the turf and has to be run on the main track. No exception this past Monday. We've got the Lord Avey, uh, several scratches in the race. So we're down about uh, five or six horses now. Mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Let's take a look. Purse on the race, 75000 Guaranteed monies for these three-year-olds. Here again is Tom Durkin's call. And they're off. Unites Big Red bounding toward the lead early. And Unites Big Red on a mission for the lead, opening up quickly. And as he clears the field, Ruben Hernandez tries to throttle down his speed. Moving into the first turn, it's Unites Big Red in front. The others have caught up quickly. Colonel Bradley's on the outside. And between horses, it's... Uh, Hurry the dance, and then a length and a half back to Mr. Reek, and another three to DeCasparis, and keep it straight at the back of the pack. Racing into the back stretch, Unites Big Red in front, pushed along by Colonel Bradley through a quarter and 24 seconds flat, two lengths back. Hurry the dance on the outside, and Mr. Reek down toward the rail. At the back, DeCasparis, and keep it straight, and those two now about eight lengths from Unites Big Red, who opens up again by three after Colonel Bradley took an early run at him. The half goes in 47 and four. The pace is a strong one into the wind with Unites Big Red continuing to lead by three as they move for the far turn. A relatively unhurried Colonel Bradley running second by three. Hurry the dance on the outside is running in third. Mr. Reekin retreats to fourth. DeCasparis and keep it straight. Three furlongs out. Unites Big Red opens up by four and a half. Now Bailey wanting a bit more from Colonel Bradley. Hurry the dance on the outside third, another four to DeCasparis. Unites Big Red passes the quarter pole with a four and a half length lead. Colonel Bradley and Hurry the Dance second and third. Off the turn and into the stretch. The lead's down to three lengths. Unites Big Red coming under a heavy drive. And Hurry the Dance cutting into that lead quickly. Colonel Bradley coming up empty down to the final 16th. Unites Big Red still there two lengths. Hurry the dance, Unites Big Red, a length, hurry the dance, coming down to the line, Unites Big Red goes wire to wire. 
Hey, Unite's Big Red gets a length victory in the Lord. A.V. Ruben Hernandez in the Irons, his first stakes win. And you folks recall that this guy battled with Arthur L. in that bump and run stretch duel back in the Tropical Park Derby. It called her on the grass, so Unite's Big Red finally gets a win here. He's had a couple of tough seconds, his last two, uh, the Super Bowl handicap and that uh, Tropical Park Derby. Hurry the Dance, second. Dikas Barris finishing in the third spot. Running time for the mile on the 16th, now on the good main track, 146 and two. All right, from Gulfstream, let's move up to Maryland, take a look at their very nice weekend of racing over the President's Day period. First up on Saturday, the Jamila Stakes, that's a makeup. Uh, from uh, last Saturday when they were snowed out. The Jamila is a state bred race for three-year-old fillies. They're going three quarters of a mile, $60,000. The added purse on the race is Dave Rodman with the call of the Jamila. Top of the stretch now in the Jamila. Weather vane just under a hand ride. Whip is out on a salt John. And on the inside, Geo Keep is struggling along in third. It's Weather vane opening up. Weather vane to the last furlong. Strolling home by four. Salt John. Hip Wolf is starting to run on very, very late now. Might even get up to claim second, but it's Weather vane. Weather vane breezes home. Weather vane by three. Second is Salt John. Hip Wolf ran third. Weather vane. Mario Pino in the irons, wires him from the rail, was sent off the seven of five favorite, and ran like it, getting the three length score. Assault John and Hip Wolf were the place and show state breads. Weather vane scooting the three quarters of a mile, very snappy, one, 10, and four. All right, the big sprint, or one of the big sprints over the weekend, Laurel, the Barbara Fritchie for our fillies and mares, going seven-eighths of a mile, $200,000 in guaranteed purse monies on this grade two race. And boy, always a full field for this lineup every single year. No exception in 97. Let's take a look again. Dave Rodman calls the Fritchie for us. And they're off. Miss Golden Circle got away well. Your special brush showing speed, but Red Hot Iron moves up on the inside, and Red Hot Iron now grabs a lead from Special Brush. Miss Golden Circle settles in in third position, and here's Dance and Renee. Dance and Renee is flashing through down to the inside, taking the second spot now a length and a half off that lead. It's Napalon settling in position four lengths from the front. Lots of Talcas next. Graceful Minister is about seven lengths from the lead. Break of a length and a half. She beat him's trick is racing inside. North Step, then it's back to a Whale Neck and North Hall Betty and Sub. Substantial is the trailer, 22 and 3 for the opening quarter. They head into the far turn, Red Hot Iron at a pretty good clip out here. Dance and Renee is second, just three quarters of a length off that pace. Special Brush is third and Miss Golden Circle racing down inside. Napalon with a fighting chance, just three lengths off the lead. Two and a half more lengths, last year's winner. Here is Lots of Talc, five lengths from the front and ridden along with a quarter of a mile to go. Graceful Minister is racing on the outside, about six lengths from the lead, followed by North Step. And this back to North Hall, Betty and Substantial, she beat them trick and well neck is the trailer they turn for home now and red hot iron is toughing out miss golden circle on the outside miss golden circles come up to claim the lead miss golden circle from red hot iron center of the racetrack lots of talc far outside graceful minister trying to gain late but too late down to the 16th pole it's miss golden circle by two lots of talc finishing well but miss golden circles done it lots of talc and whale neck came from way back to run third oh look at this the race may have been run in Maryland, folks, but it's New Yorkers, one, two, and three. Miss Golden Circle from John Kimmel's barn was second in the Burlow at Aqueduct, goes down to Maryland, brings Richie Migliori down with her, and gets the job done. A length to the good, a Kentucky bred. Racing out of New York, goes down to Maryland, and wins the Barbara Fritchie. Hey, look who's second in here, folks. Lots of talc in perhaps her final start of a magnificent career. This New York bread was flying at the end, just runs out of ground here and uh, can't get the top one, but goes out in a blaze of glory here. Uh, she is scheduled to visit the court of Cigar. That's right, she's been booked to Cigar this spring, so this uh, may have been lots of talc's last start, and boy, what a nice way to go out. Uh, a gallant effort, and her form had tailed off a little bit in New York. 
And third, another New York bred, Whale Neck, gets the show position here. But it is Miss Golden Circle going the seven panels in a New York flavored Fritchie in a minute, 23 seconds flat. Uh, makes us feel good here back in the Empire State to see that result. All right, on Sunday afternoon, we had three-year-old fillies at Laurel in the Landalora Stakes, a mile 16th, $50,000. The added purse on the state-bred fillies. Again, Dave Rodman giving us the call. It's proud run prospect, Lee, far outside, art student, going to swing even farther out, or maybe just stick down in there in between horses looking for racing room. Art student in behind runners now. She's going to switch out to the four path. We'll see if she can kick it in. It's proud run, art student in the far outside, Lil Cozy. Proud run, art student on the outside. Proud run, art student. The two undefeated ones down to the line together. Proud run, art student on the outside. Art student, art student, and proud run in a photo fit. Finish. Art student Mario Pino in the irons gets her nose down in time to keep her unbeaten streak intact. Sent off at two to one and gets the job done. But boy, proud run gave her everything she could handle as uh, she was also unbeaten coming in here and has to settle for the second spot. A little cozy finishing in the third position. Art student going her mile and a sixteenth in one forty six and two. And on Monday afternoon, our older uh, sprinters went post within the grade two General George, the mirror stake to the Barbara Fritchie. Again, we've got seven eighths of a mile, two hundred thousand dollars, a guaranteed purse, and wow, what a race. Let's take a look. Again, here's Dave with the call. And they're off in the General George. As expected, appealing skier Romano Gucci, Arden Darab is showing speed on the far outside. Y change is also right there. Y change settles into fourth as appealing skier and Romano Gucci. Romano Gucci now gets a jump on appealing skier. Arden Arab third. Y change in fourth. Stalwart member Mary's Buckaroo. Legrand pose a long shot down to the inside. Seven lengths in the lead. A large gap. Maybe seven lengths back there to game quite. Second last is Pacific Fleet and Golden Tent is the trailer. 22 and three as expected. A very fast pace here. Romano Gucci. On the inside, appealing skier right alongside. They take their duel into the fire turn. Ardent Arab giving good chase in third. Stalwart member in the gold colors down to the rail racing in fourth. Le Grand Pause. Followed by Y Change, who's six lengths off the lead. Mary's Buckaroo is urged on at several more lengths. Pacific Fleet still back there, second last. Also in the back of the pack, we have Golden Ten and Game Coit. Top of the stretch, 45 and 1 for the half mile. A peeing skier and Romano Gucci still at it on the inside. Side. But now here comes stalwart member far outside. Y change is also into it. Lagrand pause looking to pull an upset. Appealing skier just in front. Outside Y change is gaining. And here's Lagrand pause and the red blinkers coming through. One off the rail. And now Y change is in front with a 16th to go. Y change from off the fast pace to victory in the General George. Y change to win by two. Appealing skier Lagrand pause was third. Why change? Two length score here in Monday's General George. Mark Guidry in the irons. Joe Pierce had this guy training down at Hialeah and he was laying down bullets in preparation for his 97 debut. He had last raced in the Naira Mile where he finished fourth last fall. This four year old son of time for a change from that Damascus line, the magnificent sire of sires, gets the victory here. Appealing skier went early was Romano Gucci, but hangs on for his third second in a row, and Le Grand Poe finishing in the third spot. But it is wide change to score in the General George at Laurel in one, 22 and two. All right, let's take our first pause right here. When we come out the break, plenty of action remaining. We've got Oak Lawn Parks, three races over the weekend. We've got the fairgrounds with two nice handicap races for the gals and the guys. We've also got action from Santa Anita and the Big A as well. Lots more to come. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Hello, racing fans. I'm Tom Amello. Join Nick Kling and me this Sunday for Track Facts Live. We'll take your phone calls on issues regarding racing here in New York and nationally at 370-1315. 
from 10.30 to 11.30. That's this Sunday, Track Facts Live. Track Facts Live will be seen this Sunday, February 23rd at 10.30 a.m. on the OTB TV network. $25,000 could be yours when you enter the Capital OTB Handicap Challenge. The Telethater, 7-Eleven Central Avenue, will hold this unique two-day contest on Saturday and Sunday, March 8th and 9th. Entry fee is $100 per person, with 100% of all entry fees distributed based on 250 entries. And Capital OTB will guarantee the winner $8,000, along with hotel accommodations and entry fee to the final round of the Penn National Handicap Tournament in October. Registration will be Saturday, February 22nd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Telethater. For more information, call 374-1446. All right, Hot Springs, Arkansas at Oaklawn Park uh, over the weekend. We'll start you off with the Essex Handicap. For our older horses, they're going a mile 16th. $75,000 is the guaranteed purse on this year's Essex. In Hot Springs, Terry Wallace describing the race for us. And they're off in the Essex Handicap. Showing speed in the inside, Shaka Khan and Carlos Gonzalez. Out to the middle of the track, Dargo Classic Fit and Devore. To the rail is Augie, my dad. Between horses, Bunker Hill Road. Next to the outside is Julianus. After that, Ilsam in the trailer is no spin, no glow. Shaka Khan trying to bear out some with Carlos Gonzalez, but he's still got the lead three pads out from the rail. It's about four lengths back then to Classic Fit in second. Augie, my dad, third, the opening quarter, 23 and two. Shaka Khan in the silks of John Franks winging along on a six-length lead now. Augie, my dad, is second. Classic fit still third. To the rail, that is Davor running fourth. Bunker Hill Road is fifth. He's ten lengths off of Shaka Khan. Then it's Ilisam, followed by Julianus and no spend, no glow. Past the half in 47-1. and one. Shaka Khan's lead beginning to diminish now. Augie, my dad, and Classic Fit are both moving up. Devore to the outside, fourth. Bunker Hill Road's going to need some running room at the rail in fifth. Illisam's another two lengths back in sixth. Then it's no spin, no glow, and Julianus as they move on to the turn in the Essex handicap. Augie, my dad, the long shot up alongside of Shaka Khan. Classic Fit is still third. Bunker Hill Road, fourth. Illisam looking for room. Devore to the outside, three quarters, one, 12, and four. And here they come into the stretch of the Essex. Augie, my dad, long shot is on the board, has the lead. Bunker Hill Road is second, and here comes no spin, no glow. Way out in the middle of the track. No spin, no glow, under a full head of steam, rushes out to take command. Bunker Hill Road is now second. Illisam coming on the outside with Augie, my dad, fourth. It is no spin, no glow at the 16th pole with command. No spin, no glow is going to win the Essex by two and a half. Illisam getting up second. Augie, my dad, was third. Oh, talk about a horse for a course. Is no spend, no glow. Bobby Lester in the Irons getting the two and a half length victory. He was second in the Crab Apple uh, opening uh, weekend down at uh, Hot Springs. He gets his eighth career win in the Essex Saturday. And of those eight wins, six of them right there at old friendly Oaklawn. No spend, no glow. Donnie Von Hamel trainer of this one. Illa Sam finishing in the second spot. Augie, my dad, gets the third position. No spend, no glow. Three to one. Very popular choice goes the mile and the 16th in one forty-five and four. Sunday, Phillies and Mares in the Pippin Stakes at Oaklawn at a flat mile. Purse is a $50,000 added amount. Again, is Terry with the call. And here they come into the short stretch of the Pippin, and in the middle, it's Bedroom Blues. She's taken command from Western Lil. Still right there in third is Crystal Mine and Duck Trap fourth, but Bedroom Blues going stomping away to the lead with a 16th to go, and she's under a hand ride to win this one easily. It is Bedroom Blues winning it by about five. Western Lil will hold on for second, Crystal Mine third. Oh, sent off at three to five, Bedroom Blues. What a sweetheart of a gal she is easy five and a half length rock and chair ride with robbie alvarado just guiding her around the oak lawn oval this is her 97 debut and she wins under wraps here her 10th career win she's six now and boy she's going good as ever look for her perhaps uh, later on in the meeting at oak lawn uh, got that apple blossom there but boy she certainly is tons the best here western lil 
Crystal Mine. They're second and third in the race, and they wouldn't touch her if they weren't around four times. Bedroom Blues on cruise control for her mile at Oak Lawn Sunday in 137 and 4. Now on President's Day, what else? The Martha Washington. A little stake here for our three-year-old fillies racing at Oak Lawn this winter. They're going three quarters of a mile for a nice $50,000 guaranteed purse. Again, Mr. Terry Wallace with the race call. And here they come into the stretch of the Martha Washington. Zapardo, Ardo, and Little Sister are stride for stride with the lead. Three lengths back, Hollow Miss is third, Classic Misty fourth. It is Little Sister at the rail. Zapardo, Ardo not giving way this time. There's a furlong to go. Little Sister digs back, however, puts her head in front. Zapardo, Ardo not quitting on the outside. Zapardo, Ardo coming back. Zapardo, Ardo, Little Sister, and Zapardo, Ardo's going to get there and win the Martha Washington by a head. Little Sister running second, and Zach Cat was third. Zupardo Ardo, a head score in a very game stretch battle. Carlos Gonzalez on board this John Franks runner, trained by Bobby Barnett. Little form reversal here as the four to five shot Little Sister beat Zupardo Ardo down in the Thelma at the fairgrounds. But up here at Oak Lawn, a different story as Zupardo Ardo gets the win on the Martha Washington on Monday. Zach Cat, the other part of the Franks Barnett entry, finishing in the third position. Zupardo Otto's three quarters of a mile, Monday, 109 and three. Okay, leaving Hot Springs, let's zoom down to the fairgrounds in the Big Easy, catch all the action. Two nice handicap races uh, for the fillies and mares and for the older horses over the weekend. First up, the Panzeretta, that's the filly and mare uh, race. They're going a six furlong sprint here for a $100,000 uh, guaranteed purse. Here's Tony Bentley in New Orleans with the call. Fair enough. Singing Heart on the outside for the lead. Crimson Road now moves up in valid symmetry at the rail. Those three are heads apart. Two lengths back, Fresa on the inside. Then comes Twin Propeller. Morris Code on the outside is next. Then JD in Water and JJ's Dream. They round the far turn, Singing Heart. Ah, neck on the outside. Crimson Road, Valid Symmetry. Backs off a bit. Twin Propeller is next. They turn for home now in the Panzeretta, and it's Crimson Road, Singing Heart, right there, J.J.'s Dream has come on in third now, Twin Propeller on the outside, by the eighth pole now, J.J.'s Dream gets the lead, Crimson Road is next, J.J.'s Dream will win the Panzeretta Stakes. J.J.'s dream, Frankie Lovato Jr. in the irons aboard. This runner scores by two lengths. Frankie having a very fine winter down at the fairgrounds this year. Was sent off at the, as the seven to two third choice and gets the money, even money favorite. Look at that Morris Code. What happened to her? Off the board. Crimson Road is second. Fresher finishing in the third spot. J.J.'s dream going the three quarters in one, ten, and a three. Sunday afternoon, the Whirlaway handicap for our older horses, a mile and a sixteenth race worth $100,000 in, in guaranteed purse monies. Again, in New Orleans, here's Tony Bentley with the race call. And we're all set. They're off. All the way well, Buck's nephew for the lead. Heaven and nature sing on the inside. Jenna's Papa up on the outside. Then comes Byers as they head into the first turn. Heaven and Nature Sing has the lead. Buck's nephew in second on the outside. Jenna's Papa now moves into third, and Byers settles back into fourth. Dicky Ricky is fifth. Blushing Star sixth on the inside. And then comes Clash by Night. 
Down the back stretch they go, Heaven and Nature Sing. Has the lead by a uh, half length, Buck's nephew. Right there on the outside, Jenna's Papa is next. Then comes Byers at the rail. Blushing star next, Dicky Ricky and Clash by Night is a closer seventh as they round the far turn. Heaven and Nature Sing. Still on top a half, Buck's nephew. Right there on the outside, Jenna's Papa gains in third. And then comes Byers. They turn for home. Buck's nephew, Heaven and Nature Sing. On the inside, Byers is next. Jenna's Papa and Clash by night on the outside. By the eighth pole now, Byers has the lead. Buck's nephew on the inside. It's Byers. Byers, John Franks' Byers gets the three length score with Kurt Burke winning three races on the Sunday afternoon card. Byers being one of them. Sent off at a very cool eight to one. $19.40 ticket on Byers as the three to five favorite Bucks nephew uh, can do no better than finish uh, second here. Clash by night finishing in the show spot. Byers, bit of an upset here in the whirl away, going the mile 16th in one, 44 and two. All right, let's take our second break here. When we come out the break, we've got the action from Santa Anita over the holiday weekend and back to the Big A for their three races over the same period and then into our notes to update you on our stake schedule for this coming weekend. Lots more to come. Don't go away. Be right back after this. You could win $500 in prizes if you participate in the OTB Winter Handicapping Contest at the Telefeeder, 7-Eleven Central Avenue in Albany. Starting Friday, February 7th, and for the next six consecutive Fridays, you could win $500 each week with Gulfstream Park as the handicap track. The contest is free, but you must register prior to the first race. For rules and more information, call our marketing department at 374-1446. Winter Handicapping in Warm Florida starts February 7th. I didn't believe it was tax-free until I tried it. Tax-free million? I knew it was some cash game from the New York lottery. Come on. Who's kidding who? I thought I'd miss the taxes, but I don't. Not paying taxes changed my life in a good way. Sugar-free, fat-free, and now <laughs> tax-free. It's true. Lottery pays the taxes, and you get your million dollars. Tax-free million. A million dollars for none of the taxes. Saturday afternoon, we've got a couple for you from Santa Anita. First up, the Avigation uh, Handicap, a filly and mare race at a mile and a quarter on the turf course. Purse on the Avigation, $70,000 in added monies. Trevor Denman in Arcadia gives us the call. Heel for the Avigation sent on their way. Dave Pontier's coming away smartly on the outside. Logia now sprinting up, and Logia going to get the early lead. Olympia Dukakis in the white cap is settling down in third, and 290 Jones on the inside of her. Then back to Trevita with a big white face, and Fangica not involved early. Fangica might be being eased out of it here. I think Fangica might be eased. She's way, way last. The rest of them come past the stands now, and Logia is the leader. Dave Pontius is racing in second. Olympia Dukakis. Dukakis is on the outside, 290 Jones inside of that, then Trevita, and looks like Fangica's going to go on with it, but she's last a good 15 lengths. They run towards the three-quarter pole, and still the long shot, Logia is setting the pace out here, De Puntius is racing in second, Olympia Dukakis in the white cap on the outside, and 290 Jones inside of her. Then it's Trevita racing in fifth, only four lengths off the leaders, and they're not going a fast pace at all here. Then there's a gap of nine back to Vangica. They move on to the back stretch and Logia continues to lead them. De Puntias comes to put some pressure on them now. They quicken just a little as they head to the half mile pole. De Puntias on the outside of Logia. Then it's another two and a half back to Olympia Dukakis and 290 Jones going smartly enough down at the rail. Trevita is at the back of the pack, five off them and still a big gap of nine back to Fangica. 
They run to the three-eighths pole and Logia goes on with it. Logia shakes loose again. De Puntias now been sent after a second. 290 Jones going to run a big one. And 290 Jones looms dangerous. Fuller run in second and coming after them. De Puntias just didn't kick it in today. Trevita coming on late. Then Olympia Dukakis. Top of the lane and 290 Jones in full flight for the wire on the outside. Logia running her heart out at the rail. These two locked together through the lane. An ultra game. Logia at the rail. 290 Jones right up alongside. 290 Jones and Logia nose and nose. Stride for stride for the wire. Close. Logia and Gary Almeida in the Irons won the run for roses on opening day of 1997, January 1st, and comes back here for its ninth career win, winning the Avigation, and cha ching $35 for your $2 ticket on Logia. 290 Jones uh, just loses a heartbreaking photo there and has to grudgingly settle for the play spot. De Puntillas finishing in the show position Mile and a quarter for Logia, 290 Jones as well. Might as well give them both credit. Go the distance and one, 59 and three. All right, the main attraction on Saturday at Santa Anita, three-year-old fillies in the Las Virgenes. They're going a mile and a 16th for a $150,000 added purse. Sharp Cat, remember the Breeders' Cup, how she ran so terrible? Then after, since the Breeders' Cup race, She's done so well for D. Wayne. Well, let's take a look at her as she tries him in the Las Virgenes. Again, Trevor describes it for us. The ill for the Las Virgenes sent on their way. Guthrie off just a little awkward. Sharp Cat comes away fastest of all, but Queen of Money determined to get the lead, and Queen of Money sent along from that outside gate, takes over now from Sharp Cat as they go fast into the turn. A close-up third is Goodnight Aureen, clever pilot racing in fourth, Demon Acquire down at the rail, and High Heeled Hope has the red cap, seven off these leaders. Guthrie's in the white colour starting to move up on the outside of that, and six back to Sarita. They've run past the three-quarter pole, and Queen of Money setting a fast pace, Queen of Money a length and a half, Sharp Cat is right there in second. Then a gap of three and a half back to Goodnight Irene racing third and Clever Pilot outside of her. High Heeled Hope is fifth at the rail and Guthrie in the white colours closing in now. Only six off that leader. Another big gap of six lengths back to Demon Acquire and the trailer is still Sarita, 15 off them. Less than a half mile to run now and still out on the lead as Queen of Money by a length and a half. Sharp Cat is tracking her in second. Down at the rail comes Goodnight Irene, High Heeled Hope, Clever Pilot and Guthrie. Coming to the quarter pole, Queen of Money, but Sharp Cat is now breathing down her neck in the white blinkers. High Heeled Hope running at Gallant One in third. Top of the lane now and Sharp Cat takes the lead. Queen of Money on the inside of her and High Heeled Hope in the red cap. Homeward bound and Sharp Cat now goes clear. High Heeled Hope trying to make a race of it in second, but Sharp Cat is playing just too good here, shifts away sharply from that whip, didn't like that the rider's foot's come out the irons didn't look stylish, but got the job done did Sharp Cat oh, Good night, Irene do we have a runner here whatever happened in the, I guess she just throw it out, she didn't like that track because since then, she's just gone from strength to strength to strength, and you remember uh, last year as a two year old in New York, she won the matron so here's Sharp Cat winning another race in hand. Corey Nakatani by three lengths, getting her third in a row since uh, the Breeders' Cup. She swerved a little bit uh, in the stretch there. I don't know, she might have saw something in the infield or the tire tracks, but uh, Corey got her mind back on business, and uh, how good is she going to get? Uh, of course, they've got the Santa Anita Oaks uh, out there as their main target with Sharp Cat, and uh, I think uh, D. Wayne's going to have to put uh, an overcheck bit on the owners. They're already starting to talk Kentucky Derby with this filly. Not that D. Wayne has never been down that road before. Oh dear, we've got a nice one here though. Sharp Cat uh, scoring in the Las version is High Heeled Hope, Demon Acquire. Uh, they will futilely finish second and third, but it's all Sharp Cat as she goes her mile in one, 35 and two. 
Sunday afternoon, the Grade 1 Santa Maria handicap was run in Arcadia. Purse on the Santa Maria, $150,000 in, in added monies. We've got Phillies and Mayors going postward here, and it's the return of the champ, Jewel Princess. Let's take a look and see how she goes. Here's Trevor calling the Santa Maria. Heel for the Santa Maria sent on the way. They all came out well. Cat's Cradle bounces to the lead from the outside gate. Down at the rail is top rung. Toga, Toga, Toga in the white colours third and La Rosa inside of her. The favourite Jewel Princess looking to drop in onto the rail, which she's going to do now. Jewel Princess is fifth, five off the leaders. Hidden Lake back second last. And it's the long shot fast Nancy, the trailer. Past the seven eights they go and Cat's Cradle out where she likes to be. Cat's Cradle sets a good pace, leads by a length. Top rung is on a tight hold in second. La Rosa is tracking that leading pair in third. Toga, Toga, Toga is fourth, five off the leaders. Down at the rail, Hidden Lake is pretty keen to go on. Hidden Lake in the white tugging against Chris McCarran. Jewel Princess at the back of the pack is five lengths off the leaders and it's another five to Fast Nancy. They run to the half mile and Cat's Cradle still kicking on at a good pace. Leads a length and a half to top rung. La Rosa is racing third. Hidden Lake more relaxed now. Toga, Toga, Toga outside of her and Jewel Princess racing between those two. She's still five lengths off the leader and seven back now to Fast Nancy. Three eights to go. Cat's Cradle, top rung taking her on early and top rung now kicking on gamely. Cat's Cradle those far from done. She's coming back. Hidden Lake is right there two and then La Rosa and Jewel Princess in the green cap on the outside is going to come on the grandstand side with her run. Homeward bound and Cat's Cradle is now shaken off top rung but here comes Jewel Princess on the grandstand side and Jewel Princess explodes up alongside a Cat's Cradle and Jewel Princess just an electrifying turn of speed and Jewel Princess the queen yet again draws off by four and a half well, the final Eclipse winner from 96 that is coming back to the races in 97 was Jewel Princess, and she gets the win here in style by five lengths. She was sent off at even money. If she stays healthy, folks, she could very easily repeat as the top uh, mare in training. Boy, as a five-year-old now, fully matured and just handles everything for Corey Nakatani as he just draws away from this field and uh, nice to see our an Eclipse winner come back, a, win a, a winner in its 97 debut after uh, Storm Song and Boston Harbor and skip away uh, the uh, three other uh, returnees from the 96 Eclipse roll who came up a croppers in their 97 debut. Cat's Cradle was second in a good effort and top rung who was actually beaten Jewel Princess last year uh, making her 97 debut. Uh, she's going to get better again, uh, finishing in the third spot, but they're going to have to get an awful lot better to top this gal. The Santa Maria uh, goes in a time for Jewel Princess of 141 and 3, and she's got such races as the Santa Margarita, and I'm sure a trip to Oak Lawn for that apple blossom we mentioned earlier on. So Jewel Princess, the reigning queen of the main tracks for our fillies and mares and don't even look to Florida there's nobody down there that can touch her she's got it all her own right now all right that was on Sunday now on Monday the holiday nice marathon turfer here Santa Anita loves to put these races on the San Luis Obispo going a mile and a half two hundred thousand dollars the added purse on the race again Trevor Denman has the call Deal for the San Luis Obispo sent on their way. Bomb Point is quickest out the gate, but now Big Sky Jim, and that's a nice bet, going to go up to lead them. Silver Wizard is right there, fourth down at the rail. And here's Rainbow Dancer now. He's pretty keen to go on, but taken a hold of. Just took up here with Silver Wizard, got himself in a little tight here and had to drop back. Silver Wizard's dropped all the way back to fifth. Racing second last is Kafai Hom, who's nine lengths off the leaders, and Shanawi content to trail early. 
Went a pretty, pretty decent ace early on, but now they've started to slow them down. It's Big Sky Jim in front. That's a nice bet in the white on the outside. On the inside of those two is Bomb Point. And Rainbow Dancer's got a great spot here in the green sleeves. He's still a little keen, though. Rainbow Dancer wants to go on with it. Down at the rail comes Silver Wizard in the orange colours, and they've been followed by Kafai Hom in the red. There's only six lengths separating all these leaders. And then another gap of five back to Shanawi. They pass the stands with one lap to go, and Julio Garcia dictates the pace on Big Sky Jim, just settled into a steady stride now. That's a nice bet as second, and Bond Point tucked in just on the heels of the leaders in third. Right up alongside of him is Rainbow Dancer. Now he is relaxed, just gliding along in fourth. Down at the rail, we have Kafai Hom in the red colours. Silver Wizard is in the orange, just three and a half lengths off these leaders, and Shinawi's moved up closer now, which means there's only five lengths covering the whole field. They start their way down the back stretch in the San Luis Obispo, and it's still Big Sky Jim, the leader. Bond Point wants to kick on early, though, and Bond Point can quicken them noticeably as they go to the half mile. Bond Point takes on Big Sky Jim early. Here's Rainbow Dancer. He's still threatening to run a big one as Rainbow Dancer. Gary Stevens still just perched high and tracking those first two. Then we come back to Kafai Hom, and suddenly Silver Wizard didn't go on, and Silver Wizard is last. They come to the quarter pole big sky gem at the rail but bomb point sticks his neck out and goes for home now rainbow dancer is asked to pick it up shinawi's running a big one in the red cap shinawi coming home gamely homeward bound now bomb point shinawi's in full flight on the outside and rainbow dancers back in third at shinawi looking to cause the upset bomb point at the rail and rainbow dancer between them shinawi just in front and at shinawi and Brees blanc to win the San Shinawi, a half length to the good. Bryce Blanc in the irons. Sent off at 12 to 1. Da -da -da. $26 payoff Monday. Shawani wins the San Luis Obispo. Janine Sahardi saddles the winner of the first and second place finishes here. Rainbow Dancer also out of her barn. And the favorite in the race cannot top Shinawi and has to settle for the play spot. On point, finishing in the third position. Shinawi goes the mile and a half in 2, 24, and 2. Okay, from Southern California, back to the Big Apple and Naira's holiday bill of fare. We'll start you off with the sporting plate handicap on Saturday afternoon. Nice sprint here for our older handicappers. They're going for a purse of $50,000 in added money is John Dooley describing the action down at Aqueduct for us. Okay. Get, get tied on. And they're off. Unreal turn with a quick turn of early speed, but there goes Alan Demperer from the rail post to grab the front. It's Alan Demperer by a half length. Unreal turn now running second, crafty Alfell up there with the pace to run in third. Then four more lengths back to Royal Haven in fourth. Influence Peddler down inside. Then two more lengths back to Mr. Chocolate. Half an hour, second to last with a half mile to go, and cold execution is eighth. The quarter went in 22 and two, three for longs to go. And Island Emperor needs five sixteenths more to get the sporting plate. Crafty Alfell running second, unreal turn with that pink cap, three wide. Royal Haven just behind the front as they come toward the top of the stretch. A half went in, 45 and 3, 3 sixteenths to go. Victor Molina and Island Emperor clear by four. Down inside, Royal Haven now second, an unreal turn. Mr. Chocolate on the far outside. Crafty Al fell fifth. They're coming past the 16th pole. Island Emperor by five. Royal Haven, unreal turn. Mr. Chocolate, Island Emperor going to stretch his unbeaten streak to four. He takes the sporting plate by three and a half. Mr. Chocolate was second, Royal Haven third. Is Island Emperor by two lengths. Victor Molina on board, getting his fourth in a row. Never mind four wins in a row, folks. How about nine lifetime starts, eight of them wins. This guy is a stone runner, unbeaten at six furlongs. Island Emperor cruising to victory. Training down at Philadelphia Park comes up and uh, makes short work of all the sprinters we had in the sporting plate on Saturday. Mr. Chocolate and Royal Haven finished second and third. Island Emperor sent off at three to one. 
goes the six furlongs in 109 and four untouchable at three quarters of a mile not a bad runner training down at philadelphia okay on sunday afternoon the rare treat handicap for our phillies and mares mile and a furlong the distance seventy five thousand dollars in added purse money on the race again mr john dooley describing the call race for us <laughs> They're off. Full and fancy, shoop. There's Prophet's warning. Restored hope on the far outside as they pass the stands for the first time. And Jorge Chavez puts Prophet's warning on the lead. Chased there by Restored Hope now coming up to put on more pressure. Full and fancy toward the rail. Shoop up close fourth. Then Madame Adolf, Mary McGlinchey, Mel Calates, and Mystique settles in a length behind of her stablemate, Prophet's warning, who's on top. Prophet's warning by just about two. Restored Hope now running second. Madame Adolf circles up into third. Full and Fancy tucked in toward the rail to run fourth by a neck. Shoop right there running fifth. Then a stretch of four more lengths back to Mary McGlinchey. Settling in toward the back of the pack. Mystique and Bill Calates trails. The opening quarter went in 23 and four. Restored Hope up to the neck of Prophet's Warning. Prophet's Warning kicks clear by a length now. Restored Hope trying to match strides with her with a half mile to go. Madame Adolf three wide, Bull and Fancy just behind the front. Shoop is three and a half lengths from the lead now with just over three furlongs to go. The back three, Mary McGlinchey, Mystique, and Mill Calates is eighth. The half mile went in 48 seconds flat. Five sixteenths from home in the rare treat and Prophet's warning still to catch. Bull and Fancy now comes one off the rail. Shoop looms a gray threat down the far outside. Restored Hope is dropped back. Mary McGlinchey takes that shortcut up the rail. They're at the top of the stretch. Three quarters went in 111 and three. Prophet's warning now in the clutches of Full and Fancy. They're side by side in the final furlong. Shoop running third, then Mary McGlinchey. Full and Fancy. Prophet's warning won't go away. Prophet's warning battled back. Full and Fancy. Prophet's warning refused to lose. Prophet's warning, a neck victory here. Georgie Chavez in the irons gets his sec her second in a row. This daughter of Stormbird has gotten real good. She's three out of her last four starts uh, wins. She beats Full and Fancy, and Shoop hits the board again in the rear treat. But it is Prophet's warning going the mile and a furlong at Aqueduct on Sunday in one forty-eight and four. And on Monday afternoon, we had the Stymie Handicap, mile and a furlong for our inner dirt specialist. Let's take a look. Some oldies but goodies in this one, and they always give us a thrilling run to the wire. Again, John has the call for us. They're off. Iron Gavel came right away. More to tell toward the inside, out from under, King's English and Opal Moon as they pass the stands for the first time. It's Julio Pazua and Iron Gavel there by just about a length as Phil Teeter comes up with out from under. King's English is up close between those two. More to tell at the rail, three from the lead, and Opal Moon settles in in fifth as they round the first turn with Iron Gavel there by a length to King's English. Out from under, running three wide, more to tell in a good ground saving spot just behind of that front runner and Opal Moon in a holding pattern, five from the lead. The opening quarter went in 24 and one. They head down the back stretch, five for longs to go. And it's Iron Gavel dictating it to King's English and out from under a three wide trip. More to tell and Opal Moon closing in as well. It's a close knit group, four lengths front to back at the half mile pole. The half went in 48 and two going toward the far turn. And the lead held since the stymie start by Iron Gavel, still there with three furlongs. Then King's English, more to tell, has given up no ground. Opal Moon now comes around King's English. Out from under is dropped out to fifth as they come toward the quarter pole. Iron Gavel, more to tell, looking for a way through behind of Iron Gavel. And Opal Moon is there. They're at the top of the stretch. Iron Gavel, more to tell, is hemmed in, looking for a way out. Opal Moon running third. The other two are well back. Final furlong. 
Iron Gavel still there by three. More to tell and Opal Moon, final 16th. Iron Gavel by three and a half. More to tell and Opal Moon. Iron Gavel never look back. Iron Gavel sent off the even money favorite, scores by two and a half. Julio Pazua in the Irons. Fourth win out of his last five starts. 70th start in his grand career, getting his 21st win. This seven-year-old gelding by time for a change, uh, who also side wide change, who we saw win the General George earlier on the program. More to tell, the other part of the Moshera duo, finishing in the second spot. Opal Moon finishing in the third position. Running time for Iron Gavel, 149 and four. Okay, that's it for our replays for the President's holiday period. Uh, three solid days of racing activity around the country. Now let's get into our notes department and uh, check on uh, stake schedule this coming week as well as some other items of import to you. First off, the 1997 recipient of the George Wolf Memorial Jockey Award was announced this past week. This award, of course, exemplifies class, courage, and sportsmanship for our riders. And it goes this year to Alex Solis. So congratulations to Alex Solis for winning this year's George Wolf Award. Now, as to our stakes lineup this coming weekend, and uh, it's a good one. We've got the Fountain of Youth down at Gulfstream. And of course, this is the prep for the Florida Derby. And we're going to have quite a lineup of three-year-olds, including Pulpit. Frankie Brothers has announced that uh, he might as well put this horse's feet to the fire and see what he's got. Uh, he has wowed the country or, uh, by uh, winning that maiden race and then coming back and winning non-winners of a uh, race other than in a sparkling time. So uh, Pulpit, if all goes well, will be in the lineup for Saturday's Fountain of Youth. We also have Arthur L. and Acceptable. Uh, D. Wayne might uh, be shipping a horse or two in from Southern California to try these South Florida runners. Uh, so it's going to be quite an interesting fountain. That's this Saturday. It will be on national television. And again, when that happens, we cannot in-home simulcast those races for you. They will be available, of course, at all of our simulcast facilities. We just cannot send it into your home, you pick up the race on ESPN. Uh, also, down in Florida, we've got the Rampart handicap for our fillies and mares. At Laurel, we've got the Harrison E. Johnson Memorial handicap and the Notches Trace stakes. At Oak Lawn, we'll take a look at the Hot Springs stakes, a nice sprint for our older horses. At Turfway Park, you notice there was no Turfway on the program again this week. Uh, they got crunched again on Saturday, so uh, we're really playing catch-up. They have announced their makeup of the two races, the Dust Commander and the President's Stakes, both of which uh, have been scrapped the past uh, two Saturdays. The President's Stakes will be run this coming Friday, so if you're watching on Saturday morning, hopefully the race was already run and they didn't have to cancel out. So we'll have that one on the show for you. The Dust Commander will be made up on Sunday, March the 2nd. Their regularly scheduled stake uh, for this week, the Valdale Stakes, hopefully will be run on Saturday. As uh, they're right in the middle of the country and have all kinds of weather and track-related uh, problems this season. Uh, down in New Orleans at the fairgrounds, we've got the Devona Dale Stakes. The Risen Star Stakes, cash deposit, looks to get another crunching win here on his uh, road to the Louisiana Derby. Out at uh, Bay Meadows, we've got the Haywood and the Santa Clara. Southern California at Santa Anita, the San Marino and the Los Flores. And back at Aqueduct this coming weekend, the correction sprint for our fillies and mares, the Busher Stakes for three-year-olds, three-year-old fillies, that is. And then uh, next Wednesday afternoon down at Gulfstream, the Heather Handicap. So a full lineup as we uh, move toward the end of February and closer to spring. And we'll keep an eye on the three-year-olds. And uh, regarding our dual qualifier list, those of you that uh, happened to miss it last week, what we'll do for you is we'll update it every other week as we move along 
toward that first Saturday in May. And just a brief mention of Jules, one of our dual qualifiers that you saw on the list last week, ran this past Sunday at Gulfstream and forget it, throw the race out. He obviously didn't like the track, which was wet at all. He can do much better than that. Uh, no word on whether or not he came out of the race in good order. He only ran about a half a mile before he chucked it in. So uh, we'll keep an eye on Jules. And the silver move has been declared out of the Fountain of Youth. That uh, patch on his foot and his training set back just enough so not quite ready for Linda Rice to go in the Fountain of Youth. Uh, just a brief uh, cap on some of our three-year-olds that were on the list last week. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the program. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. As always, stay tuned right here to your OTB TV radio network station where you get the most complete coverage in thoroughbred racing. Till next week. Jack will proceed here. So long, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.